Hello everybody. Um, just a, a little um, update really uh, on the channel and pretty much everything in between. I haven't really done um, a consistent thoughts of the week uh, or sort of ramble of the week in a while. Mainly because the amount of work I've got on my place at the moment at home at work. Uh, it's as simple as that. It's what I've put on myself, but uh, naturally I knew that things would kind of slow down with this kind of video uh, when the work increased. And um, Project Ruby is going very well. Uh, there's a lot of things that are coming off the car, as you can see in the videos. Um, I've got practically half the car in my flat. Um, well, it feels like it half the time. But this is the process I went through with Beatrix. Um, there's not much more stuff that is going to come off. Um, now it's just sort of the nickety little stuff. I've got to uh, do a couple of things like uh, rebuilding the carburetor, that sort of thing. It's coming up. It's coming up very shortly. Um, but overall, um, she's going well. Uh, Beatrix is touch wood, starts on the button and ever reliable as always. Um, and the focus has been out a couple of times. And as much as I like, but the truth is I have to be very careful about the weather. I don't drive that car in the wet. So if I can't drive it, I can't drive it. I will take Beatrix. Um, I'd rather take the. I'd, I'd rather take uh, Project Ruby to be honest with you. Um, but um, yeah, it's all going well. And um, generally, I just wanted to cover a couple of things. Um, again, full focus Mark One preservation stickers. If you want one of these stickers, if you're not in the group, join the group because uh, then you'll find out information to buy them. Um, and then channel stickers, if you only need channel stickers, just email me um, and that's it really. I always have to say that and now that's that, that's that out of the way. A um, couple of live streams that I've done recently and I've been given some money through um, Super Chat. Is that, that's what it is. I enabled it ages ago but I've never promoted it. Uh, I've never begged for money. Um, and it's a surprise when people do send me money. So I thank you for your generosity um, because I don't expect anything. Uh, and that's the truth because I choose to do what I want to do. And I don't have, you know, you guys aren't holding a gun to my head saying, you know, I must do this. I must go to this show. It's, it's my choice at the end of the day. Um, and I think it's wrong for people to ask for um, you guys to pay for their hobby, essentially their choice. It's as simple as that. Um, yeah, you could argue I'm making good content, but the thing is YouTube actually pays. Um, actually, I don't think it's as bad as what people make out personally. I mean, people, some, some YouTubers make out that it's pennies. Well, it depends what sort of part of the country you're from. If you're from London, then it is going to be pennies. Uh, but if you're, if you're earning, you should earning a wage outside of London, um, it's not pennies, actually. It's pounds. So... That's the way it is. But um, everything's going well. Uh, the Focus Mark 1 Preservation Group is going very nice and it's ticking over very, very nicely. We've had a few new members and we're having a, a small group of people that um, really enjoy the cars. Um, mainly, there has been another data release, the data statistics stuff. Now, I can't really give approximations uh, with how many of each model are left. A Focus Mark 1, Rover 45, or even the Ford Fiesta Mark 3. I can't really do any of that uh, because the information that is given uh, in basically July, September and January, those three quarters, they're generic information. Um, but I have a good algorithm to kind of determine, especially Mark 1 numbers, where the numbers are. And um, the numbers are quite stark. As I say, I won't be able to confirm my numbers until next May. May is when all the details come out and we'll truly find out where we are. But in terms of the numbers, uh, Mark 1 numbers are steadily decreasing. There is no sign of slowing down. They have gone down at least 5,000 cars um, in, the, in the quarter between Q4 2022 and Q1 2023 this year. So that's a, that's a pr pretty much a three month period each quarter. So it, um, it, there's no sign of it slowing down. And looking at the SORND numbers, I wouldn't say that there's much of a difference there either. I, would, I wouldn't say there's a, there's a pattern of people 
um, keeping sound cars on the road, off the road. So basically, what you'd see is if that say on a particular model, four cars less are licensed. I look at the sound data, and if that four cars have been added. That gives me an idea that people are restoring them and repairing them and keeping them, not breaking them. But there's no sign of that. The sawned cars are going as down as the licensed cars. So we are seeing a lot of uh, losers. And um, sadly, one of the rarest Mark 1s, um, and I do think it's worth talking about, the MP3 Limited Edition. The last quarter, there was only 133 of them. Now, as as a car becomes rarer, the amount of them coming off the road becomes less. It becomes a curve, as you see. If you go on the How Many Left website, you'll see that curve graph. And it, it is very, uh, it's, it's very logical, really. Um, so you would imagine that we're not talking about, you know, 20, 30, 40 cars coming off the road. We're talking about maybe four or five, maybe, uh, at this stage anyway. Sadly, 20 of them disappeared. 20 of them were scrapped completely. And now they're down to 113. I can't believe that. Of all the special limited editions, most of them have got less than a few hundred of them. That one, the most came off the road in that quarter. 20. That's appalling. That is ridiculous. There was about 20 that came off the road for Ford Focus Inc. And there's about 380 of them. Now there's 360. That's what I would expect for that number of cars. But 20 for a car that's... Well, now it's the second rarest Mark 1. The Millennium, thankfully, none of them have been... Well, not, no extra ones have been sawned. So basically the sawn data is the same and the number license is the same at 51 so thankfully no millenniums have disappeared um but mp3s that's sad that is and most of them because of the wheels i think that's so sad it's untrue um and i think that needs to be said but that was the main thing um the automatic versions of the mark 1 on the 1.6 and 2 liter automatics fare quite well they are the highest surviving model variant of any type of Mark 1 Focus. There was still 20% of the automatics remaining in existence from what was originally first licensed. That's incredible. But it does show a pattern. The manual cars are going out because they're abused. The automatics, they're not abused and they rarely go wrong. There's niggles, but they rarely go wrong. So uh, that's not surprising there. Um, but that's really that, so it's quite depressing, and Mark 1 numbers are now down to about 65,000. But this was six months ago, and approximately at the moment, we're looking at probably about 55, 56,000 left on the road, if that continues to now, in September, okay? Um, so, yeah, and as I said in the last thoughts of the week, it's, um, they are becoming more valuable. There was a guy who approached me at a recent car show after looking at my Focus and said, I've just sold mine. It's a 51 plate pre-facelift, um, 1.6 LX, five doors. Um, I think it's Metropolis Blue, by the way. I think that was the colour. 70,000 miles, all the dealer stickers from new, two owners from new, all the original bill, everything, the whole works. He sold the car for 2600 And that is really good. That's a cooking model. That's not an ST170 or an RS. That's a cooking model. Selling for that amount of money now. My God. Mark 1 prices are going up. And I'm really excited about that. Because it puts the car... And I, as much as I want this car to be accessible for a lot of people, I don't. I really don't. As a current owner, I want these cars to be out the reach of people that would just buy them because they're cheap. They're a cheap banger and it will get them round for the next year. I want it out the hands of these people. These people can buy Mark II Focuses. Mark II Focuses are cheap now. They're cheap now, um, particularly the early ones. People can buy them instead. They're decent cars. They're decent cars 
And I'm not being funny. If you want a cheap banger, you don't, you're not going to care that it's a Mark II. Um, so I hope that Mark I's just continue rising in price now. Um, at the bottom end of the scale, if you buy a Focus of less than a grand, you're looking at a car with problems. Um, so it is pointed out the hands of a lot of people. Um, I will be getting some proper insurance on the, the Focus uh, very soon. Uh, some agreed valuation classic car insurance because I want my car valued as such in case of the worst case scenario. You know the way it is the way people drive these days. All it takes is one person who goes into the back of you, end of the car. Simple as that. And mine's already had uh, an accident and I suspect it's probably not as strong as a result. I don't know. The welding was good, but it's never quite as strong the second time around. So that's where we are with Mark 1's Rover 45's. Um, I think they continue to just plummet as well. I mean, they're rare cars, but they're still continuing to die because nobody wants them. Apart from people in the Rover community who sadly don't value them very much. Sad, really. Um, I'd recommend that if you're not bothered about having a manual, I'd recommend a 45 CVT. Um, because there's only uh, about ugh, 260 odd of them, I think, something stupid like that. There's not many of them at all. So um, I'd recommend if one comes up, you grab it with two hands. If it's a decent one, it's got a working gearbox, it's worth uh, probably 1500 uh, It's probably worth more than that, to be fair. Beatrix, I, didn't, I mean, I wouldn't sell Beatrix because the value is so low that I couldn't ever anticipate moving such a fantastic car on. I don't think it's a I think it's worse than Mark One's. I think Rover 45's been valued as low as they are is criminal. It's worse than Mark One's and there's no sign that they're going up in value, which is also a bit concerning for the long term prospects of that car. I've got a feeling that 45's in the future will be as rare as Rover uh four hundred HHRs these days and there's only a few hundred of them. I think there's probably only about 400 500 hhrs left uh we're probably talking about that with 45 sadly um even the v6 is not valued and as i have been told a few times they're not actually that thirsty not as thirsty as what people make out of course they're going to be thirstier than a 1.8 k series but mm, i don't know i think there's a lot made of that that isn't um, but in terms of, and I've been asked this before, if I'd have bought the Rover 45 first, would I have bought a Mark 1? I reckon roles would have been reversed. I reckon if I'd have started my driving life with a 45, I reckon that car would be currently in the garage in a completely restored condition, probably better than what it is now with paintwork as well. And the Focus Mark 1, 50 Shades of Panther Black, or whatever Focus I decide to buy, would have been bought last year as a project because they're cheap. There's no, there's a, how many cars below the price bracket of fifteen hundred pounds would you say are really good cars to own? I wouldn't say there's many cars. I wouldn't class a Rover Twenty Five as a, a great car. I'd class it as a good car, but I wouldn't class it as a great car. Uh, Rover Seventy Fives are great cars, but they're expensive. And I think they're more expensive than Mark One Focuses. So I'd have ended up buying a Mark One Focus um, if I'd if I hadn't have owned one years ago. So the the roles would have been reversed a little bit. So I would have eventually bought a Mark One Focus. I really do. And uh, my God, I'm going grey. You notice I'm going grey patchy in my hair. I just noticed on camera. My God, I'm getting old, man. <laughs> um, I need to start dyeing my hair. Blimmin' neck. I always noticed that on camera. Um, so, yeah, it is uh, it is the way it is a little bit. Um, so, 45s continue to be the way they are. Um, Fiestas, they've got to an age now where the early ones are probably preserved, which is good. Uh, and mine's one of them. Uh, and I hope to, to make mine one of the nicest ones. Uh, up there in the bracket, probably not the nicest, but... Up there, hopefully. Um, I'm not really. I've never. I was never interested in buying a Mark 3.5 Fiesta, because to me, a late one for me, you might as well buy a Mark 4, because there were so many things that they changed later on that actually made them less interesting. 
Um, if I wanted something with fuel injection, then I'd just buy a Mark IV Fiesta, and they're quite hard to get hold of these days. Mark V Fiestas, uh, very rarely do you see one on the roads now. Uh, compared to Mark I Focuses of the same age, they are very rare cars, and most of them have got serious rot, even around the filler clap. The, the, I keep saying that all the time, filler clap. I, I get my words minced so badly these days, it's ridiculous. Um, the filler cap. Um, even the later ones where they redesigned the whole thing. The early ones on my Fiesta were dreadful, but there's no sign of rot on that. And the late ones apparently are much better. But I've seen some really bad ones recently, very bad ones, literally where the filler neck has got a hole all the way around it and it's just not supported by anything. Ford KAs are just as bad. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you've got that as well. Uh, the MG uh, the MG Rover CVT register is going very well. It's a very small niche group. We've got about 115 members, uh, but I'm glad that group's going quite well. Um, and I've just recently given some decent advice on, uh, on, on the group about, just to be clear about filters, fluid, uh, what you need to do to look after the gearboxes, just, just in general, really. Um, but um, I'm, I'm hoping at some point to actually dissect one. Uh, which won't be coming soon, um, when I've got the time. When I'm a little bit less cluttered uh, in my flat and things aren't... There'll be a there'll be a position where with Project Ruby, exactly with Beatrix, where there's so much stuff inside my flat and not enough on the car, but eventually that transition will happen and then things will start going back on the car more than what's in the flat. So I'm not... I'm still bringing stuff in at the moment. We haven't started putting stuff back on the car. So it's at that stage where so much is in my flat and I'm rebuilding stuff in here, like the carb, which will be coming soon. Um, but I'm because there's so few things in the engine bay and on the car, I will just keep cleaning, wire brushing, better paint here and there, while things are off. When I'm satisfied that everything has been done to the base as, as such, you work from the ground up, then we start adding things back onto the car. Everything that comes in here has been cleaned to an inch of its life. Uh, maybe a bit of paint, the radiators had a bit of a paint. Uh, some of the brackets have been painted just with some satin black. Nothing fancy, nothing fancy at all. Um, I'm not really going down the route of high temperature paint. I think yeah, if we start going down that road, where does it stop? And I've got to be careful about my expenditure on this car. Um, it's not like Beatrix, it's not staying with me. Um, but I've got a feeling that if I get this car working and running, it may be one of these cars that I might keep for a bit longer than 12 months. It depends how I feel. I will assess how I feel in 12 months time of ownership. Um, and then I'll make a decision on whether I sell it or not at that point. It will be sold eventually. Um <clears throat> And I hope that somebody who watches me may want to take the car off my hands because that will be useful. Um, I'm not one of these YouTubers that thinks because he's a YouTuber, it's a YouTube car and I've shown people how good the car is. It is an advert. What I do now is an open advertisement. It's so that the car is going to be the car that I want to own in terms of condition. I love getting my hands dirty. I love showing you guys all these things. I wanted to show you distributors, mechanical pumps, carburetors. It's a diff this car is a different world to the world that we live in these days with fuel injection, ECUs, uh, and everything else. And that's what I wanted to show you guys. Um, and tuning a carburetor up, I'll tell you, I, I, that's, that's going to be a cracking video, that is. And also timing it up with a strobe gun. I've got a new strobe gun because my old one, I can't find it. I, I don't know where it's gone. So I've had to buy a new one from uh, AccuSpark. That's the one. Um, so I've got all this... Uh, it, it, down the line um, so it will be a car that will be sold uh, so I wouldn't ask too much for it considering I paid probably to the up the upper mark of Mark 3's Mark 3's exactly like Mark 1 focuses uh, actually I would say Mark 3 Fiestas are even worsely valued I think Mark 1 focuses actually at the moment, are starting to really touch on Mark III Fiesta territory. Mark III Fiestas are worth absolutely nothing. It's, it's, it's so sad. It's really so sad. And I think the Mark III community don't 
exactly up the value of the Miva, um, which I can't understand because there's so many passionate people on the Mark III Facebook group uh, that absolutely love this car. Some people modify them, some people keep them original. Um, each their own on that one, either way. But that's the Mark I community. Um, so it's not that different. But it, it's really sad that people don't ask more for them. And when people do ask for them, they get booted down by, I'm not being funny, I don't call them enthusiasts, I call them naysayers. We know who they are. They're the ones that always go, oh, it's not worth that. I've had enough of that. It's worth what somebody's willing to pay. Uh, and I was willing to pay a little bit more for a very early example, being an automatic. And I think being an automatic, it will appeal to an audience more or less. But I am not going to do the YouTube thing of inflating a price because it's a YouTube car. There's a couple of YouTubers recently that I've watched. They've bought a car and tried to flog it um, and um, at, at, like, at least a thousand pounds more than what it really could be worth. And that's what it could be worth, not what it's valued at. And I think that's just it's just wrong. It's just, sorry, um, just because it's a YouTube card doesn't necessarily mean that people are going to pay uh, a gazillion because, I don't know, it's been on this YouTube channel. Um, it does have that kind of charisma about it, but I wouldn't think that it would be worth like way, way more than what it is. Um, I wouldn't ask too much for it. As long as I can get uh, the majority of the investment to put it back in the car, I know it doesn't always work that way, and it never does. Um, but um, it, it, it will be down to me and somebody else to work that one out. But you'll be getting a stonking car, I can assure you, and a car that not many people can get their hands on because I've never actually advertised any of my cars for sale. So um, it is one of them. It was owned by Andrew, and he knows his stuff. So that's the sort of car you may be getting if you are interested. Anyway, um, last thing. I have to clip the camera again because if these clips are too long, it sort of goes out of sync. So I just press that button. Um, lastly, um, thank you for your support as always. Uh, the channel is going from strength to strength. I have no idea where it's going, but the long term aspect of my channel may potentially, depending on how it goes in the next 12 months, things might settle down a bit slower. I anticipate my channel will be directed mainly at the two cars of, that are the mainstay of my fleet. Focus Mark 1, Rover 45. And it will continue to be like that. Whether it's slow, uh, obviously there won't be as much work long term. Um, but ideally, um, I'm not really too bothered about content long term. Because I know that my channel will get to a stage where it will peak and then it will slow down. And it will become... Just one of these channels where I will do a video, maybe a couple of videos a month. That will be years in the future. But this channel won't cease. It will just continue to run. But it will be a much um, more niche thing. I will still be going to car shows and doing a lot of things in the Mark 1 community and the Road 45 community. Um, I mean, to be fair, the only time I go to a, a, a sort of inherently MG Rover meetup is BL... Uh, days or the Pride of Longbridge so there isn't really as much of a community with 45s as as I've found um, there isn't really specific meets or anything like that nothing specific anyway um, that I have discovered so um, that will be how it looks like in the future but for the the present day things are very busy and um, I can honestly say things will never be as busy as this I think I've reached my most busiest um, do give me time to get through to comments. I like to reply to every single comment as much as possible. I can't realistically reply within the day um, because I'm getting that many messages. I am now at the stage where I'm unable to reply within 24 hours. If you send me an email, give me a few days. Ideally, some of you have emailed me saying, I've got this problem. And ideally, when you've got a problem, you want a quick response. I can't give you that quick response no more because of the amount of things I've got on my plate. Um, so the best way of putting a problem across to me is when I do a live stream. Yes, it's once in a blue moon sometimes, but I try and make it as regular as possible. Um, and I will be doing a drop-in centre. So if you have an issue with either your 45 or Mark 1 Focus or even your Fiat, I'm not being funny, 
your Fiesta Mark III because by the time all that car is back together and on that road, um, there's not much that really I can see being a problem. I'm not being funny. If I had to touch the suspension, it's a Matheson strut. You know, if I had to have the spring change, I'd just go to the shop and they'll just swap the spring on the strut for me. Um, I have got spring compressors, but I can go to the shop and they'll do it for 10 quid or whatever. You know, maybe 20 quid for both sides or whatever. Uh, the bottom arms are exactly like Mark 1 Focuses. You've got two inner bushes and you've got a ball joint underneath the hub. Nothing to it. There's absolutely nothing to it. There's no anti-roll bar. The twist beam rear suspension, two those bushes, those void bushes, the train arm bushes as they're called, they're not train arm bushes, um, they've been changed. Now I'm struggling to get um, original ones anyway, but um, and also the tool, the tool to get the Mark IV bushes out, Mark IV Fiestas have different bushes in them places, they have a different bush and there is a tool, but you can't use that tool to push out Mark III Fiesta bushes, so that would be a bit of a faff if I had to do it, but they've been changed. So I don't need to do that. And they look absolutely fine. Um, there's nothing to that rear beam. Again, Matheson strut assemblies at the rear. If the shock absorber leaks or the spring leaks, fine, I'll just have them swapped at the shop. You know. Um, exhaust. Probably a bat box. We might need a bat box because it looks like it might go through in about 12 months. Uh, but apart from that, the exhaust is original. Doesn't look as if there's any problems, really. Um... What else? There's just nothing to this car. There's no boot. Touch wood. There's no boot leaks. Um, there's no interior leaks. Um, I'm trying to think of problems. and I, uh, The seats. I've got to do the seats at some point in the future. I will do them at some point. Don't worry about that. Um, there's nothing wrong with the headlining. They don't ever go wrong. There's not really. They don't really have a material to them. The sunroof does not leak, although I need to make sure that the drains are good on them because the drains go into the B pillar and down into the middle of the sill. I need to make sure that they're all sort of unblocked. So uh, maybe take some trim off on the inside. The fan needs looking at. I'll take the fan out. Uh, in the Very soon, actually, that fan is going to come out. Or maybe the fan may have come out, uh, depending on when I put this video out. It's supposedly around that, this sort of time. Um, so the fan, um, I'm struggling for things to talk about. I was thinking of taking the sump off the CVH to see what the oil bath was like and everything, but actually I'm quite happy with what I've seen. Um, so I'm not really in the mood, a mindset of dropping the exhaust again. Uh, I'm not doing that again. Um, and also because of the way the sump goes around the, um, Basically, it'd be the uh, the crankshaft seal, okay, not uh, at the uh, sort of at the pulley side. That seal is held against the sump. I don't want to, I don't want to disturb that because there's no sign that that's leaking, and I don't want to take the sump off and disturb that seal. Uh, it's very different on a K series and on quite a few other engines, but that for me is a no no. I'd rather leave it. Um, I'm disturbing enough as it is, and I'd rather just deal with what I need to deal with. But honestly, the arches are going to occupy my attention. They're going to need a little bit of a faffing, faff of a bit of work. Um, the stone chip that Ford used, there's no name for it. At Austin Rover, when they did the two-tone thing, that grey is Tempest Grey. But Ford, there's no name for it. There's literally no name. It is literally just plain stone chip. Which, why, I can't go to my body man from those jobs, because I know what he'll say, we'll have to spray the whole side out. I'm not paying for that. I cannot justify that cost. So I'm going to have a look at both arches and see if I can get away with some filler to see if the rot is okay. If I can grind it back to good metal, I'm putting filler in them arches. I am not having them cut out, because that's going to be a huge major expense. I do prefer to do the job of having the metal cut out. If it was my Focus Mark 1, I'd have the metal cut out because I'm keep, I'm not getting rid of that car. But with the Fiesta, I can't justify spending hundreds of pounds that I know I'm never going to get back in 12 months. And this is where the reality of owning a car, this low value, is. If I was keeping the Fiesta, metal. 
but it depends how bad it is. I don't know how bad it is. It could be stupid. You've seen that little hole, and just that tiny little, I don't call it even a hole. It's like a perforation on the inside of that um, sill uh, that, you, that I showed you, the, the one episode where I showed you the underside where we did the gearbox drain. Um, that's it. That's it. It's just nothing on a Fiesta Mark III. That is absolutely nothing. There's no rot around the filler cap. It, it just there's nothing to talk about, guys. And that is the conclusion I have from this. Um, there, there's just nothing. I need to get some new tires on there. I need to look at the brakes because we know that one caliper's chain been changed at the front, but the other one hasn't. We don't know how good the brake drums are and whether they lock. So there's a few things I'm going to be looking at when I take the wheels off. We're going to go from corner to corner. Um, but there's nothing that I... Those plastic arch liners, I've had a peek on, at the back of them. The scabs. Scabs. I'm going to see you very soon, guys. And um, there's plenty of Fiesta Mark III videos coming up. I will not be able to make September the 23rd in that Fiesta. There's too many things I want to have right first. And I want to get used to the car before I rollick it uh in a two hour motorway journey it's a bit mm, yeah but it will be making an appearance at the motorist in october definitely the motorist is my place to go to by the way guys i think i've decided that that is a nice location it's a nice drive for me and quite frankly it's fairly central there's a few other places that i'll go to naturally um, but that is the place i will go to but the 23rd of September, I'll be coming in the Mark 1 Focus. So I cannot wait to see many of you who are going to turn up, maybe in your Mark 1s or another car, but please turn up. Um, I will be there. Anyway, you take care, guys. I will see you very soon, and I will start rambling on.